Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Natasha Kipper, and I'm the Training Services Manager at Cuba KMF. I will be your moderator for today's webinar. Thank you for joining us today. Majority of bowling and entertainment centers are still closed, but we have been hearing a lot about inching closer to the day when those venues are allowed to open, and it is coming soon. For some areas, sooner than others, but we're on our way there regardless. This is why we're shifting our focus from what to do when your center is closed to things to consider as you're preparing to open your center and how to assure a smooth and successful transition. It is clear that there may be some changes and even some challenges along the way. Our goal today is to begin that conversation, explore options and ideas, and also guide you on how to safely and properly restart your equipment systems and your operation in general. With me today, I have two panelists and experts in their respective areas. Brian Kane, who is the scoring, uh, I'm sorry, senior score scoring technology expert here at Cubic AMF and our seasoned panelist. He also owns and operates his own center in Pennsylvania. Brian has been in the bowling industry for over 30 years and has worked with Cubic AMF systems for over 25 years. Also with us today, we have Mike Randizi, who is a technical support manager. He has been with Cubic AMF for over 20 years and has held various positions within the company. He has been providing technical support to not only our customers, but also our installers and trainers in the field, as well as many other internal resources. Here today, we are going to um, discuss the following topics. We're going to begin with system and technical processes. After being closed for extended period of time, it is important to follow proper steps in powering on all hardware and equipment to avoid potential challenges and ensure smooth transition. Next, we're going to review some operational considerations, including the changes that may be necessary in the beginning phases of reopening. And finally, we're going to discuss training of your staff as you prepare to open, implement the changes, and serve your customers. Lastly, we will review the resources that are available to you to guide you along the way, and we will also have time at the end for any questions that uh, you may want to ask us, uh, particularly our panelists. And we also have a few questions that have come in prior to the webinar, so we will be sure to address those questions as well. So with all of that being said, let's begin our discussion with um, hardware considerations for proper restart after being powered down for extended periods of time. Mike, what are some, some recommendations in this general area? Let's start with, um, let's start with pin spotters. All right, with the pin spotters, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is make sure they're clean and make sure that there's no objects on or around them. It's probable that there was some work done during the downtime whether it was machine adjustments, replacing parts, any other sort of maintenance that was done. So check for tools, check for any other items that may have been left out. Just check around the pin spotter so that when they get turned on, nothing gets jammed up in the pin spotter and you end up with a bigger problem. When you do go to turn them on, turn them on one at a time, one pair at a time from the breakers. Don't just go flip the entire house on all at once. Once you get the entire house turned on one pair at a time, let them run in continuous cycle and let them run for two to four hours. And while they're running, check to see if anything's out of adjustment. They've been sitting for a while. The climate in the bowling center may have varied a little bit from HVAC not being on. So you may have to make distributor adjustments. You may have to check for spotting cup adjustments. There may be some adjustments you have to make to that machine. So keep an eye on that while they're running. Okay, thank you, Mike, so much for that. Um, what about Concord terminals? When it comes to the terminals, before you start, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to check is your battery backups. Those are the devices that keep the computers powered on when the power goes out. 
since they likely haven't had power going to them, they may be discharged and completely dead at this point. If they are, go ahead and plug them into the wall and leave them plugged in for about half an hour before you start plugging other things into them that are going to require power. While that's going, it's a good idea to dust and clean around the computers, make sure the computers have proper airflow, make sure none of the vents for the computer are blocked off. The computers really don't operate well under heat. So anything you can do to ensure proper airflow around them is good for the computers. When you do go to boot things up, bring the server online first. If you have a separate server, it may be located somewhere in a back office or in a server closet. If it's just the go ahead and power that computer up first. When you bring it up, the green cue that you typically see down by the clock, you'll see that turn green and then you'll see it turn red again after it powers on. The first time it turns red, it's just running the daily task that it hasn't been running because it's been powered off. So let it run the daily task. It may take some time because it's going to create database backups, clean your database up and get everything so give that 10, 15 minutes, let it run, wait for the queue to come back to green. After that happens, go ahead and run your Windows updates if you have any. It's best to just go to the start menu, go in through control panel, click on Windows updates, check for updates. If there are any, let's get them installed before everything starts up. After Windows is all the way up to date, See if there's any Conqueror updates ready to install when you start up that server. If there are, go ahead and let those run as well. And then once that server is all the way turned on, ready to go, then start going with the front desk terminals and the POS terminals and all your other terminals in your center. Do the same thing with those. Clean around them first. Check the Windows updates on them. Check the Conqueror updates. And the one extra thing we're going to want to do on those is test all the peripherals after Conqueror gets up and running. We're going to want to test things like the receipt printer, the poll display, the card swipe, the credit card readers, anything else that you have plugged into the front desk computers or the POS, just to make sure everything works. That way, when you go to open for business, there's no surprises and everything works as expected. Perfect. Thank you, Mike, for sharing that. Um, quick question. Once the server is up and running and everything is done as you suggested earlier, for the rest of the terminals, do you suggest for each one of the terminals to boot them up completely and, and run through everything that you mentioned? Or is it okay to turn them on one after another and just let them boot up? It's okay to do more than one at a time, especially because those may take some time depending on how many Windows updates are required. Sure. So if you want to turn one on, start Windows updates, and while those are running, go to the next terminal and turn that one on, that's perfectly fine. Okay, that sounds good. So as long as the server is up and running and everything is updated, the rest of the terminals can be done however you choose to do so. I think it's going to be important for um, those facilities that have several terminals and POS terminals that will certainly take a little less time than waiting for each one to boot up, boot up completely before you move to the next one. Okay, thank you again, Mike, for sharing that. Brian, let's talk about uh, facility and general um, considerations and things that um, our customers should be uh, thinking about as they're moving into the reopening phase. So a couple of the big things to consider, one is, especially if you have really cut back or shut down some of your heating and air conditioning systems, uh, the first thing to make sure is that you've changed and replaced all of your filters in that prior to opening. And then another good thing to keep in mind is probably after running them for just a few days, you're probably going to want to replace those filters again, especially because the everything's been shut down for a while. and you're gonna have a lot more air moving around in the facility. So even the new filters you put in are gonna have a tendency to obviously collect a lot more dirt. And of course, anything germ-wise and stuff that's in the air at this point. So changing those filters is going to be a key. 
Second thing would be if you have any hood uh, and vents, if you have any cooking facilities, you're gonna wanna make sure that you check those again, make sure that they are all clean. Even if you've done a very thorough cleaning prior to shutting down, if it's been a bit of time since you've used any of those, now would be again, a great opportunity to fire them up and make sure that they're nice and clean and ready to go because obviously with them setting, they've also collected dirt. So going through those and just wiping everything down well is going to help. Uh, the next thing would be thinking about your appliances. So if you have any uh, refrigerators or freezer units that you have already cut back on or shut down, now would be the good time to start to get those plugged in again, make sure that they're working and holding temperature like they're supposed to be before putting food back in them. And uh, ice machines, if you have any ice machines, if you've shut them down, now would be the great time to turn them on, start getting some ice being made. And of course, just like during a normal routine cleaning, make sure that you're throwing away, you know, the first few batches of ice that are made from the ice machine itself. Uh, so that uh, the ice that is in there is going to be fresh and clean. And then some other considerations would be thinking about like your soda lines and stuff like that. If you have any fountain sodas and drinks, you're going to want to flush them out. So you're going to want to run a few sodas through each one of them and make sure everything is nice and clean. Check your CO2. Anything that you haven't used, obviously, in the facility for some time, now is going to be the time to start to run through those, make sure everything is nice and clean and ready to go so that when it is that first time to open up and get things going, you know that everything's working and clean like it should be. Last consideration, I would say if you have a game room or a redemption center, make sure all your games are on, everything is booted up and working there because obviously, same as with our Conqueror terminals, you might run into some issues if they've been off a while. So now would be the perfect opportunity to make sure that they are all working and ready to go before you open. Perfect. Thank you, Brian, for sharing that. And before we go too far off the subject, talking about things that haven't been utilized for the time that you've been closed, um, and somehow we have moved uh, way too far here, but that's okay. Um, let's talk about, um, Brian, have you talked about restarting services that have been canceled? Not yet. We were going to do that in operation, so we can do it right now. Okay, we can do it right now, although I've... Um, advance a little too far in, in our visual, but go ahead and cover um, restarting services then. Okay, so for most of you, uh, if you have uh, listened to some of our other webinars, we went through some of the services and things that we suggested that you check on to save on some money while your facility is closed. So now would be the perfect opportunity to start to get those services back up and running like they normally would be. The first big one to keep in mind is going to be your credit card. So if you shut down credit cards and you're going to need them when you open, so now would be the perfect time to get them back online, make sure that they're working, uh, including maybe running a test transaction on, on the units and make sure everything is actually operating and going into the bank properly. Second thing, if you've cut back on like uh, your cable or music service, make sure that you get that working again. Uh, thinking about anything else you might have cut back on, for instance, uh, trash or anything that you might have just put on hold to save some dollars. Keep in mind, there's going to be a lot of those things that you're going to have to get restarted and we're going to have a lot going on with reopening. So some things might get missed. I know for myself, I made myself some very good detailed notes on step by step of everything that we shut down, turned off or, or changed uh, to a different time frame. So we'll go down that list and make sure that we've covered everything uh, in the facilities so that we try not to miss anything. So again, a good idea is just to go through anything in your normal day-to-day -day operations, making sure that you still have in place all of the things that are going to be necessary to run your business like it normally does. Now, keep in mind, we might have some limited opening in regards to how many people can be in the facility and things of that nature. So just keep that in mind when you start thinking about do I need full trash service yet? Um, some of the things that you maybe still can save some money on when you first start to open because maybe it's not going to be completely full like we used to be. Obviously, that's probably going to be the case for most centers. So there can be some things there you might be able to save on. The other big piece that comes up would be your inventory. Even if you're doing food and beverage, you're probably not going to be selling the food and beverage that you normally do. So consider thinking about that when placing those orders for what you're going to need on hand, just to try to save yourself some money 
you know, in the meantime, before business is back up to normal. That's a good point, Brian. The last thing you know, after being closed for so long and getting ready to reopen, is missing reactivating something that you're going to need. Absolutely. In addition to that, I understand some of um, some of the states are given very short period of, of time for, you know, notice when they can open. And I know folks have been eager to get back in the center and be open for business and start generating revenue again. And some of these th things may take a little bit of time um, to either, you know, restart the services or change them back to whatever levels you need them to be. So just keep that in mind. And Brian, like you mentioned, just go through and make sure you have everything that you're going to need going forward. Yep. Okay, thank you for sharing all of that. Um, let's move to um, operational changes and considerations that um, may be relevant going forward and may be different from what we're used to prior to this uh, pandemic and shutdown or bit of business. First thing that comes to mind would be your hours of operations. Um, what are they going to be? Are you going to keep the same hours of operations that you had prior to closing? And where are they posted? Um, consider all of the areas that you have had uh, your hours posted on before, like your front doors, website, phone messages, social media, things of that, that nature. And um, as you're reopening, consider how you're going to communicate those hours to your customers. Are you going to make a public announcement that your, that your center, your venue is uh, reopening? Are you just going to kind of, you know, open quietly and let the business kind of move in the direction that's most natural? Um, also consider what's being posted on Google. As you know, any business that you Google these days have their hours of operation and a lot of them have all of the disclaimer says, you know, subject to change due to COVID-19 situation. So check that just in case to make sure that most accurate information that you want on there is uh, posted. And then again, along those lines, reopening plans. How are you letting your customers know? Are you going to have um, well thought out marketing campaign that you're going to broadcast to your customers via social media, your website, things of that nature, or are you going to kind of have a soft slash slow opening? Um, we have heard from um, some of our customers that there's some concern about general perception regarding bowling centers opening already. Uh, we understand there's some negative press out there we know that people have their opinion, whether you know they're eager for some of these businesses to be open so they can resume their lives and continue to do things that they have once um, enjoyed doing. And we also know there are some folks out there that are going to be quite critical um, of what's happening today and how dare you opening or you know whatever the case is. So just be mindful of your own specific situations, the area that you are in, uh, maybe you have already have some feedback from your customers via social media. I know I see a lot of familiar names here attending this webinar, and I know you have been quite active on social media. So gauge, gauge kind of what's going on out there in the community and uh, plan your reopening appropriately. And Brian, next thing I want to talk about is supplies and inventory, and you have covered a little bit. Um, in this area as far as your food and beverage inventory and con considering the phases and other restrictions and how many customers you will be able to bring into your center right from the beginning. Uh, we also know that your food and beverage vendors will be able to help you with those par levels. Um, and especially if you're considering a limited menu options for the time being, so that way the, the uh, food supplies that you're purchasing can be, can be utilized across the board in several different menu items so that way you're not sitting on your inventory for too long. Um, in addition to your food and beverage inventory, consider your cleaning supplies as well. We know that supply chain has been affected greatly by um, the current situation and some of the cleaning supplies might have not been as easy to get your hands on or may take a little bit longer um, 
to, to deliver them. So keep that in mind as you are uh, considering what that's going to look like for you going forward. Brian, have you had any issues with that? Have you started placing orders yet for your center? Uh, we just had a little bit of a, an issue with some of our paper supplies uh, uh -huh. being back ordered. We did manage to get some, but uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world at this point in time. The other thing that we've done, we had some trouble initially with getting, just like we, we, anyone who's tried to get them at home with any disinfectant wipes and things like that. So what we actually started to do was we actually started to make some of our own wipes out of full rolls of paper towel with some alcohol and things of that nature. So there are a lot of creative ways out there that you can customize or make your own if necessary um, at the beginning. So keep in mind, if you are short on something, usually there's somewhere online that you can find a way to be able to make something that's going to work for what you need at that moment. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, we've been hearing a lot about people making their own supplies. So yeah. that's, I mean, um, it still solves your issue and buys you a little bit of time until some of these things go back to go back to normal. Okay, and perfect. Keep, and, and keeping in mind that a lot of the businesses, guys, are going to be open, not just bowling centers. Oh, and a lot true. of them use the same suppliers that we do. So there's going to be a limitation on how much is available out there. So sooner rather than later is probably also going to help you when you start thinking about some of the things that you might need if you don't already have them in stock. Absolutely. That's a good point. Um, okay. One other big topic is of course, social distancing, right? Um, while we can tell you with all the certainty what this is going to look like going forward, because um, none of us know, there are some considerations that um, you will have to think of depending, again, your center specific, state, county specific, all of these things are, they vary so much across the board. We heard yesterday a handful, a handful of states um, allowed bowling centers to reopen while many of you, the rest of the country, is still kind of sitting idle waiting for that next step. So what are going to what are your changes in procedures and processes going to be again nobody is really certain what this is going to look like going forward and different states and counties are going to have different guidelines for different types of businesses so again whether you're just a bowling center operation or you're a family center with several attractions and um, large food and beverage venue some of those things are going to vary a great deal Brian, do you have any kind of ideas and suggestions right off the top of your head that maybe you're considering? Um, well, one of the both? things that we're considering is going, across, you know, going by the national guidelines that are put in place, like for phase one, where it's saying groups of 10 or, or less, you know, it's going to depend on the number of individuals that can come into the facility, but we're thinking to do like every second or third lane, depending again upon how many were actually allowed to be in the facility. But as we do that, initially what we're going to do is kind of almost treat it as a private event and just kind of book them each hour just to get people in the doors and turned over and let them have that experience almost like a little private event. Um, another big piece that we miss a lot of times is if you have a big sign out front, a lot of times we put some advertisement on specials and things like that up there. Keep in mind, that's a great place that you should be actually using uh, in regards to your opening process to make your customers aware that you are open, that you are taking some reservations, you know, that you do need folks to come in and do bowling. You're, we're smaller businesses. We want to keep them running. So again, reaching out to that customer base is still going to be a big part of everything that goes on. And that sign out front, a lot of times we overlook, can certainly be a plus for your business. Certainly, yeah, that's a great idea. You can definitely use it as a tool in that sense, which you didn't have to do that before. Great idea. Um, to add on to that, I've heard um, a couple of conversations over the past few days. Um, some people are considering in the initial phase or maybe even first two phases, um, they're considering to limit walk-in business and instead do a lot of their bookings online. So if you're able to, you might want to consider that, whether it's web booking or customers having to call your bowling center. Um, 
to book their um, their outing or event or whatever they plan to do ahead of time. So that way you will be able to space them out accordingly and be sure that you're not violating some of those guidelines and, and procedures that were put in place for each phase. The, so, other, the other thing too that I would point out, and I actually heard it on the news today, there's still, you know, that negative notion from a lot of people in regards to the bowling balls being dirty, the finger holes and the thumb holes not clean. Sure. So I know we, we clean the bowling balls at our facility all the time, almost every day, several times a day. But I think going forward, at least during this crisis, one of the big things that we're going to do, and we're going to tell our customers this, is to leave all the balls on the lane when they're done so that we can physically go down and clean them ourselves and put them away. And the customers that are there and that are coming in will see that we're doing that. Not only hearing it and us telling them, but they'll physically see us doing it as well, which I think is going to be a very big piece because that's the one piece that people are going to be afraid of is what they can touch and what they can initially. So the more that we can make them feel safe in that environment, I think it's going to be better for all of us. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yes, because um, yeah, we've been having a lot of discussions on how to handle um, not just the cleanliness of the bowling center, but also how to manage some of those pieces, you know, customers touching bowling balls and bowling shoes and even super touches and other bowling bowler consoles. So those are some of the things that we're going to really focus our time on in the upcoming days and weeks and um, really brainstorm what are some of the best um, techniques and ways to, to um, handle these things to assure the safety of the customers and the employees, but at the same time, uh, provide this image of we are a clean facility, we, we take this thing very seriously, and here are the things that we're doing along the way to assure um, that our customers know that. Brian, you've been a part of some conversations with me where some folks are very adamant about their staff wearing masks and gloves and carrying their cleaning supplies with them throughout the center to assure that their customers are aware of what's going on. But then also on the other hand, there are other operators that say, no, 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 I do not want this in my center. When folks come in, um, I don't want them to see this. I want them to focus on having fun and having a good time and, you know, enjoying themselves. So, of course, all of us are going to have different feelings and different opinions about all these things. Just keep one thing in mind. What matters the most is your center, your particular operation, and your area. There's no right or wrong answer here, okay? All right, so with that, Brian, let's move on to some of the training considerations. One of the, I think, most important things going forward and initially is going to be communication with your staff. Um, as you're getting ready to, to reopen, the time comes to bring all of your or partial staff back. What is that going to look like? Are you bringing everybody back? Or maybe you're just able to bring a few of your staff members back considering the fact that you may not be able to open in full capacity. Whatever, um, way you decide to go or you're able to go, make sure to communicate that with your staff, not only with the staff that's coming back right away, but also the staff that may be able to come back in the upcoming weeks. Right, um, and, and the other piece to think about is we might not even get back the staff that we had. We might be having some new people or new folks, so there's going to be some training that's required for those folks. But again, communication is going to be key but for sure, we will have some staff members that, you know, that, that there's turnover, especially for those ones that are um, part time or maybe younger kids, because we might have some parents that really don't want to allow their kids yet into facilities, even though it's a working piece. So we have to consider that some of the staff coming back could be completely different. So that cross training is going to be a big piece, too. Maybe that person that worked the front desk also now is doing some work over in the snack bar or the food and beverage area or mm -hmm. vice versa. So in, in either case, we have to make sure that we're doing a refresher on the cross training in each of those areas to all of the staff so that they realistically can be used in different locations, especially with us initially opening. 
where our staff is probably for sure not going to be at full capacity. So we're going to have to rely on some of the folks that we do have there to be able to work more than just one area. And I would definitely make sure the folks that I did bring back, I would want to make that perfectly clear that, hey, I'm going to need you to step up and help us in some more areas than just what you're used to, because right now we don't have everyone back and we're not at our full capacity where we normally would be. Yes, absolutely. That's a good point. Um, the, some attrition is going to be, I mean, it's just going to happen naturally. You yes. know, this is, um, I think that that's fair to expect. And in whichever, um, whatever the case is in that area, even if all of your staff comes back, keep in mind, they've been away from, from your business for over a month. Some, some places even long, right? And um, even the things that they have been very knowledgeable with in terms of whatever systems you use, whatever operational procedures you have, all that kind of stuff, it will be very important to refresh them in that area. And even more importantly, some of your parts of your operations are going to change, at least for the time being and foreseeable future, you know, next few months. So the better they understand that and more knowledgeable they are about that, the better chance you have of them executing your vision perfectly. Because some communication will have to happen between employees and the customers coming in in all of these areas that we've already discussed. So keep that in mind um, going forward. And of what course, that, and go ahead, I'm sorry, Brian. That's okay, what, what that also that made me think of is, I know there are several of your centers out there that have during this time also did upgrades to your Conqueror system, to Conqueror X. Yes. So keep in mind that you're gonna need some training to some of those staff members that haven't ever seen it or touched it. Now, operationally, Conquer X is going to work just like it did in the past for just Conqueror, but it does look different, and you do have a little bit of a fear factor at first when you look at it, and it looks different. Even though operationally it's the same, the look is completely different. So you're going to want to have the staff have some hands-on with that to prior to opening so that they at least feel comfortable and aren't overwhelmed when they're first looking at it. And again, I point this out because I know there's several of our centers out there that have scheduled and done the upgrade with us during this closed time. So now is a perfect opportunity uh, before opening to get some of those folks in and feeling comfortable that you know are going to be some of your key staff when you initially start. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. Also, don't forget that we do have um, Conquer X video, as well as the quick reference sheet in our customer portal. Um, so if you go to cubicmf.com support, if you go to customer portal from there, you can either just log in or register for it if you haven't done so already. And under management systems, there will be Conquer X tab. And in there, you will see the video and the quick reference sheet, which your um, staff can watch at any time. And then once they view the video, you can walk them through any of the changes that are specific to your center or any of the things that you want them to execute differently. So um, hopefully that could be helpful to get some folks up to speed a little bit uh, quicker in that area. Um, Okay, so we've covered operational changes, anything that you have in that area from your hours of operations, changing your business model, communication with your customers, any cleaning initiatives or um, things that you are doing. I just learned um, yesterday on a different webinar, somebody has suggested that venues could actually hire companies to come in and do deep cleaning, disinfecting, and sanitizing of the center. And they can also hire um, somebody to come in and train all of their staff on how to properly do so. Um, to some folks, it's important, or perhaps some customers, it's important that when they walk in to see that um, um, the staff is very well versed in this area. So, you know, if you're able to or interested, that could be something to consider as well. Um, and with that, the cleaning procedures, right? Something that's um, very important to talk about and everybody's been uh, quite consumed about what this is going to look like and what do people need to do to not only keep their 
employees and their customers safe and keep the centers clean, but also what do we need to communicate to our customers? Um, how far do we have to go and what is really important for them to know to feel comfortable coming to our venues? And like Brian said before, there's still some um, bad or negative rather perception about bowling centers and general cleanliness. So that's something really important for you to consider if you haven't done so already, I'm sure um, all of you have, but what are those things that your venue, you uh, as a propri proprietor are doing to keep your center safe and um, your customers and how are you com um, communicate, communicating this with them? Um, do you have documented process? Do you have checklists? Do you have labels in certain areas to, uh, to be put up or signed by your staff every time an area is cleaned? Many of those things. Um, and one more thing I wanna mention um, that I forgot to add on when we're talking about um, operational changes and uh, communicating with our staff, how are you handling screening for your employees? Have you considered that? To be honest with you, I haven't quite uh, thought about that a whole lot until we started talking about these topics that uh, may be important for our customers to know about. Do you plan on checking your uh, checking temperatures for your staff? Um, are you going to advise them to self-report any symptoms they may have? Are you going to define any guidelines or communicate with them? Um, how you expect them to um, communicate things with you as far as what they do outside of the workplace. Um, again, honestly, I, I hadn't thought about that, but um, I think it's something important to consider because um, your staff is going to be dealing with your customers. And every, and every area of the country is going to have different rules in regards to the way things open. And part of that could be that you do have to make sure if someone's not feeling well that you are checking temperature and things like that and sending them home and making sure who they've been in contact with. Yes. So some of these things we do have to keep in mind even though it's not normal to us. Obviously these are some things going forward right now that we definitely are going to have to address and be comfortable with because it's going to have to happen. You know, the, the biggest part is, as we talked about already uh, several times in the webinar today, is that cleanliness. You know, mm -hmm. there's going to be nothing better than for customers that do come into your facility to see your staff always cleaning and taking care of things to make people feel safe and comfortable. Because I guarantee you when those folks leave and they have seen those things happen, that word of mouth is going to be a plus to your facility. So we, we need to practice as much as we can on that cleaning procedure. And we need to make sure that our staff is well versed in it and they're constantly doing it because you know in the old days you'd have the staff running into the bathroom with their cell phone because you don't allow cell phones at the front desk some mm -hmm. of these things are definitely going to have to change going forward during this opening time until we do get back to a standard opening yes yes absolutely well brian let's switch gears here for a second i have done a terrible job of paying attention to any messages or questions that have come in um, might have gotten a little carried away with the conversation. Um, but let me read some of the messages that have come through and address any questions um, that may have come in. Um, okay. I believe it depends on how big your center is and your occupancy capacity. Yes, I think um, related to our earlier conversation. Dennis from Double Decker Lanes is here. Hi, Dennis. In your opinion, are we in phase one or phase two? Um, I think everybody's starting in phase one. It's just a matter of at this point in time, are you allowed to enter phase one based on where you're located? I understand yesterday, South Carolina, Texas, Georgia, I do believe maybe Tennessee, um, some of those places, they, they have specifically mentioned bowling as being one of the businesses that's allowed to open. But I can tell you here even in South Carolina, many places are allowed to open at this point in time, but in Myrtle Beach specific, not. Right. So even though the state guidelines are one thing, again, counties and cities can apparently make their own decisions on which businesses they allow to open. And Brian, I don't know if this is your understanding too, but I thought 
you first have to enter phase one and then after a period of time and certain things have to happen before you can um, enter phase two you cannot start from being closed opening in phase two is that true that's that that's what they're saying of course we know that the rules change every day right now phase one allows up to like 10 people or less in groups um, and then phase two goes up to like 50. But again, each one of those phases depends on your area because even though that's what's recommended by the national, if your state or even your county decides on different rules, you have to abide by what they say. But certainly any big venue is never initially when we first opened gonna be what it was. I mean, they're never gonna allow a facility to open and have a hundred people in it that are right next to each other. That's, I mean, that's just not gonna be the case. So we have to consider we're gonna to have to probably start with smaller groups and work our way up to getting back to normal. Yes, I agree with that. Um, here's what Dennis said. We're planning to have no furniture on concourse, taking reservations hourly, a cleaning station for bowling balls, having customers leave rental shoes and bowling balls on their respective lane for employees to pick up, planning every other lane. Brian, that's similar to what you were considering. Perfect, yep, that's actually yes. a great way to do it. Yep. Again, it, it really comes down to, and this is something that you have to think about in your facility, is even though we do the perspective of so many people and we space it out with you know, so many lanes with nobody on them, we have to consider that the back concourse area is shared by almost everyone. So you almost have to flag off each one of the areas behind the lanes and say, you know, the folks with your family and your group have to remain basically separated and in this area so that you don't interfere with the folks that are in that area. So right. some of those things we're, have, we're gonna have to take into consideration as well. Yes. And any comments on rental shoes? Um, again, that's going to be very, <laughs> there could be several different uh, ways to handle that. As um, Dennis said here, uh, um, as I read a minute ago, some folks may um, ask their customers to leave everything at the ball return and then the staff will um, grab it and clean it and put it away. Right. Um, also, you may consider for your staff if you are able to provide that um, lane service, if your business model allows for that, for your employees to deliver bowling balls and shoes to the to each customer when they get on the lane. Um, some folks are talking about cleaning the shoes and bowling balls right in front of the customer to assure them that those things are clean before every customer gets to use them. So again, depending on your business model and what you're able to deliver, again, especially in the early phases where the business is going to be limited and being open and only allowing, you know, less than 10 people in the building, that can, that can provide its own challenges as well. Um, okay, having wipes out, think grocery store cart wipes around the game floor and bowling area. This give guests a little more control over the ideal level of cleanliness and show your invest in their comfort, just an idea. Guest service will be key. Training new and existing team members on how to handle guest concerns and questions. Kim, great point, excellent point. One thing I wanna bring up though, um, a lot of you have all sorts of different equipment and um, things in your venues that you have to be mindful of what you can use to clean those pieces, okay? Um, I know even with our super touches or different monitors, different games, um, coin changes, anything that's out there, be mindful of how you want to handle that cleaning and whether you want customers to, um, to handle that on their own or you want your staff to do it. Regardless, having that comfort for any customer to be able to do it themselves, you know, because nobody can do it as well as I can, but, you know, face it, that alone will provide a little bit of comfort. I got to tell you, I'm one of those people. I was the grocery store and a lady says, here you go. This car has been clean. I said, yes, thank you very much. And I, you know, move a few feet and I wipe it off one more time with the, you know, wipe that I have. But again, it's all about that, like Kim mentioned in here, uh, making customers comfortable and 
knowing how to handle their concerns and questions and things of that nature is going to be key going forward. Um, okay, let me write another one. We intend on marking out spots six feet apart for customers in line at the desk, snack bar, and bar, just like stores are doing now. Fantastic. Yep. That's Fantastic. a great best practice that we can learn from um, other businesses as well. Okay, Bill, supplies, masks, sanitizer, wipes, supply, suppliers? It all depends what you are um, going to implement in your facilities and, or facility. As we mentioned before, some folks are very adamant about their staff using masks and um, gloves and things of that nature where some other proprietors feel that they don't want their staff to do that. And it's um, gonna depend on the area. So like here in Pennsylvania, you have to have a mask on inside of a business. All employees and anyone going into that facility has to have a mask on. Oh, okay, yeah, see that's not the case here. So yeah, another important piece, you have to consider your location and the regulation, regulation specific to your area. That's going to be the key. Um, I was going to make another comment. Oh, this is the thing I, honestly, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, I meant to. Um, OSHA website, yeah, I think we discussed this. There are some considerations whether you make your staff, whether you make wearing masks for your staff mandatory versus voluntary. So any of those changes that you're considering to implement, please check your um, check those websites and those um, organizations to make sure you're on the right track and to also make sure that you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing in terms of regulations and, and policies and different things like that. Because last thing we want today is to not be compliant with something. For sure. Um, so you're sa Nick says, you're saying that we will have no leagues in phase one. I am almost certain that we will not have leagues in phase one in the old traditional way that we're used to having leagues. Meaning right. having, you know, so many teams come in and bowl on the same night on same pair of lanes. Brian, do you agree? I agree. I think that that's going to be probably phase two and even phase two is probably going to be smaller leagues and it's probably not going to be till phase three till you have big leagues in. Yes. Okay. Um, is there a national group such as USBC lobbying on behalf of proprietors for clarification in standard, start standards of requirements for each phase? Um, I am not aware of that. Brian, are you? I am not. I know that we have some different folks that are doing different webinars in regards to some of the programs that are available, but I don't know of any group specifically by the USBC in regards to since all this is new, I can't imagine they've even asked anybody or tasked anybody with this idea yet. But for sure, it's something hopefully uh, going forward that either Strike 10 or BPAA or somebody will put something together. Because again, that the part that's going to be tough is every location can be different, even state by state, even county by county. So even though things are put together for one specific area or one you know, even one county doesn't mean the county right next to you can be completely different. That's, that's what's hard with the way it is right now. Yeah, in each phase, is it going to mean a same thing for everybody across the U.S.? Or again, is it going to depend on which area you're in? Like what you said earlier, Brian, in Pennsylvania, they require you to wear a mask. We're here in South Carolina. They don't require us. So Correct. does phase two look different to you than it does to me here? Life. Probably, and it depends on the number of cases. And, you know, I mean, like right now, Pennsylvania is number four for the number of cases. So we're quite high. So a lot of that depends, but it, you could be in a state that doesn't have a lot of cases, but in one particular area in your state or where you're at, there is. So you might meet completely different rules as well. So again, it's really going to depend on each one of those areas. Yes, I agree. Okay, just to warn you, these comments and questions are getting more and more interesting. I think we should, I think we should just organize weekly group discussion <laughs> and brainstorming session for everybody. But listen to this. We discussed this um, earlier in the week, you and I. 
Can an employer be sued if employee catches virus because their workplace was not safe? I.e., we are to keep a safe work environment for our workers. This is something I'm completely worried about. Um, yes. As you guys know, most of the insurance companies already have written into their policies that they do not cover for a virus or anything of that nature, which is why we weren't able to get anything in regards to business interruption insurance. There's a few policies that maybe missed it or didn't have it, and some of those folks might get lucky, and I know there's a few states that are actually still trying to collect money on this. But again, where that leads or ends up, we don't know, but I am concerned that since my insurance company does not cover right now for any of that, who is responsible? If I open my doors and people come in and one of them happens to be sick and gets a couple of my staff members sick, or somebody right. gets really sick on my staff from it that got it at the bowling center and, and ends up in the hospital or passes away, who's responsible? Is that liability on me? That's, that's one concern I have, and I don't think anyone's answered that question yet. No, I don't think so. And here's what I want to know. How can you prove, how can anybody prove where you got it? Exactly. Well, again, the big thing right now that they're working on is tracing each case, which is going to take like forever for the size of what we are. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, that's, I think that alone will be very challenging to, to prove, but nonetheless, even, you know, just being in that situation would be uh, quite challenging. So yeah, I think this is going to remain a concern. Um, for the time being anyway, but we don't really have, um, we haven't been able to find the answer to this. This is why it's very important to follow all of the guidelines to make sure that you, pro to, to document what you're doing and all of the efforts that you're making. And as I mentioned before, the OSHA website is going to probably be very helpful in that area. So should anything, God forbid, um, happen, that you may have to prove what you have done to keep your staff and your customers safe, you will be able to do so um, easily. So hopefully that's that helps at least a little bit. Mike, is Cubica working on an online reservation system? Brian, you want to take that one? Uh, if you have the old Cubica AMF uh, online reservation system and it was working, that is still working. But uh, going forward, we are definitely working on something that uh, will be new. Uh, can't talk about it um, too much right now, but just keep in mind that definitely something that we are definitely working on uh, wholeheartedly at this time. Thank you, Brian, for answering that um, without allowing me to get to um, detailed on that answer. I appreciate one, it. The one question that I did see come up uh, was in regards to how to control folks going in and out of the bathrooms. Uh -huh. um, being a smaller center, I was concerned about this as well. And I've been paying more and more attention uh, when I was out at the store and things of that nature what, um, that, are, that are open as to what they are doing. Some oh. of the places are leaving like their doors open and only allowing X number of people to go in and out of the bathroom. So again, I think it's going to depend on the size of your bathroom, uh, how many folks are in there and can have the social distance. Um, but you are probably going to have to make some limitations in regards to how many do go in and out of the bathroom for sure, because you certainly don't want five or six people in the bathroom if it's a smaller bathroom and there's no room for the social distance. So these are things that we definitely are going to have to keep in mind. Some smaller facilities might make it that it's only one or two people in the bathroom period at a time. That's it. Also, there are some considerations how to control um, number of people that's coming inside of your building. If you have to have 10 or less or later on 50 or less, whatever that number is. And some folks are considering having just one door um, open for customers to come in and out and having a person standing there wiping off the door handle and um, saying hello to those customers and also counting how many people come in and out in case you're one of those centers that um, plans to open the door to public and not just online reservations, there may be a consider consideration for you to keep track of how many people um, are in your building at all times. Yes. So thank you for bringing that up, Brian. Okay, Joe says, leaks are not likely to happen for a while. Here in New York, probably not until September. Yeah, you're probably 
probably. Right. Right. We have signs in our scoring monitors from last week open to leave balls and ball returns to have staff clean before brought back into the rest of the equipment. Planning on adding shoes to be left on lane two. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Also consider the fact that if you're not using, if you're going every other lane, it means one lane on that pair is always going to be empty. Consider how you're going to rotate those lanes based on how you plan to to, to run your business for the first phase or maybe even two. And for the lanes that are not utilized, you can always have either static images or videos or scrolling message on those monitors. They can be informing customers of what's going on at all times in a building. That way you don't have to physically hand them anything either. The other thing too to keep in mind is that obviously to keep things evened out for lineage and things of that nature is to make sure that you're doing basically starting with your odd lanes and working your way across the house and then coming back as those lanes finish and starting with your even lanes, but making sure that you still can keep that separation in your lanes. But we don't want to just put everyone on the odd lanes and everyone on the even lanes or even split it up. One day you do odd lanes, the next day you do even lanes but making sure that you're still trying to follow some of the guidelines we use for lineage, just so that maintenance wise for the pin setters and, and wear and tear on things does even out across the house rather than just specifically on one lane. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. Um, try to, Tony says, try to do credit card transactions completely, so not handling cash. You take cash in, then give cash out, could be impacted. Very good point. Could be, yep. Very good point. Um, supplier recommendations to get this PPE, Bill is asking. No idea. No, I don't either. Perhaps one of our um, attendees, Bill, may have an answer, uh, which I have 14 more messages to go through. So um, if we don't get an answer, we'll address it at the end. And right okay. now, right huh? now, the way that that stuff is needed for the healthcare industry, it's going to be very hard for businesses to get. I mean, and we're going to pay a premium to try to get it. Some of the wholesale clubs do have some, but I saw that uh, on a couple ads where the masks were selling like a box of masks for like $70. So keep in mind the price of the stuff that is available, people are definitely gouging. Yes. Uh, Walter says Sam's Club. Yeah, I think Sam's Club does have yeah. some. Well, it did. I don't know what they still have. I got to tell you, I ordered some disinfecting wipes on Amazon the other day. I got three different kinds from three different places, and they should be arriving by June 1. <laughs> uh, so we, we ordered some stuff like that, too, and actually Amazon just gave me my money back today because they oh, no. were fake sellers on Amazon just trying to make a buck. Oh, no. Yes, I guess that's one other thing to consider at this, at this time. Good grief. Yeah. All right. Jim says, in Wisconsin's Badger Bounce Back plan, phase one is up to 10 people, phase two will allow up to 50 people, and then phase three will be no limit on number. That's the, so that is the national right now as well. That is the national, but I think each phase also, what I read, um, there are different guidelines for um, those folks that are vulnerable, elderly, and um, anybody with any preconditions, and then different guidelines for uh, low-risk folks. Correct. And then something else. So, I mean, it's just like a very, very difficult math problem to me. But nonetheless, what are your thoughts on tournaments? I guess there won't be any for a while. Again, we, we don't know at this point. It would be basically just like a league unless you're doing like I saw that Scott had mentioned like a drop in singles or something uh -huh. like that, which is possible. I know I know from some of our conversations with other customers out of the country. I know Japan opened some of their centers and they were actually doing one person per lane. So, again, it really depends on what's allowed in your area and what you're looking for at the time. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Again, a traditional setting that we're used to will probably um, it'll probably take a while to get back to that point. As Joe said, in New York, they're not they're looking till September possibly. Um, right. But 
take this time to maybe consider some other formats. Um, maybe it's not everybody coming in at the same time, and we know that's a lot of the uh, point of our leagues and tournaments and, and events like that. But maybe it's time to get creative and, and try to figure out how we can have still this kind of competition, but maybe folks are not in at the same time. Maybe use, I think Pat Snow mentioned this a few weeks back, Brian, when you guys did the other um, webinar, maybe one team per pair and then do a couple of different shifts, you know, we're just gonna have to um, see how long this is going to last in this kind of format and see what we can do to overcome some of these challenges. We're gonna have to be creative right now, for sure. Yes, for sure. Dennis said, I've ordered the newest forehead thermometer, planning to use as customers walk in. What is your opinion? Um, I think it's definitely a good idea. Um, a lot of the places do that. I just went to the doctor's office with my husband, which I stayed in the car, but he went in to pick up his prescription and they took his temperature. We have also heard that Disney is maybe um, contemplating doing this. We've heard, like Brian mentioned, um, Japan and a couple of other um, locations abroad are definitely considered doing this. To me personally, I don't care for that, but as a business, you want to make sure that any anybody who's coming in your door is, you know, not in a position that's going to maybe affect everybody else. I would definitely implement this for the employees, for sure. That's what I was going to say. Definitely, definitely for your employees, this could be a big thing because you're going to want to make sure that nobody that's working is is sick. So certainly having something to check uh, with your employees is definitely probably going to be a plus at this time. Yes. And Scott says checking temps could be a no-no in some states because of right, rights infringement. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that too. You have, you have to be. And right. I guess it's going to depend on the area, but I mean, I think most of that goes out the door right now because I don't think you're going to any doctor's office in any state at this point that they're not checking your temperature before you go into the facility. So I think some of that goes out the door. Yes, but also consider some of those places that, you know, people are going to be very happy to see that you're doing this, but you're also going to have other people that are go going to be, you know, really not happy about it. Yep. I think it's going to be um, a double-edged sword in some ways, but I wonder what it would be if you, you know, ask customers if they feel comfortable if you did this. Yeah, again, I, I guess it's going to depend on the area and the customers, but realistically, if you don't, again, who's that liability fallback on? Am I going to be it's concerned about liability or am I going to be concerned that the one guy didn't want me to take his temperature? And maybe if I'm taking temperatures and he's the one guy that doesn't want it, I just say, okay, I don't need you to be in the facility at this time. There you, know, you go. I, That's another way to look at it as well. You have to play out the do's and don'ts for your facility and your business as to what makes the most sense for you. You got to protect yourself as well. And my staff, I don't want my staff getting sick. So I definitely need to make sure that I'm worrying about them as much as the customer. And anyone who doesn't understand that, I mean, realistically, then I have to say, okay, then maybe at this moment, I don't need you in the facility. So that's a good point, Brian. I, I mean, it's, it's hard at this point in time to turn anybody away, um, a paying customer specifically, but at the end of the day, you have to make sure that um, you really protect everybody's safety and, um, prosperity of your business for okay. the long term, not just today. Yep. All right. I do believe I have read all of the questions that have come in. Thank you so much for submitting them as well as your uh, recommendations and your comments and sharing what you are doing um, in your venues as well. This has been great. Thank you. Um, let me, Brian, read a couple more questions that have come in uh, prior to the webinar. Uh, Keith has asked, what are our requirements in New York? He has a 36 lane center and he's wondering how many people will be allowed in the center. Can the snack bar open? Can they serve alcohol? Do we have to wear masks, masks at all times? And what cleaning procedures do we have to follow? Again, we don't have rules or answers to, I hate to say it, any of these questions, but Keith, 
here's um, something very important to consider. New York and your um, guidelines are going to be much different from you know what Brian sees in Pennsylvania and I see in South Carolina and many of our um, other viewers across the country. So it will be very important to, um, to follow your state requirements and guidelines to find um, answers to, to these questions. Um, do we have to wear masks at all times? Again, I, I, I'm not, I don't know anything specific in New York. And I know we have a couple of folks, Joe and a couple other people from New York. Maybe you guys know better than us. Again, we don't know specifications for each state as every single state is different. And cleaning procedures that you have to follow. Um, I currently am not aware of any specific procedures or guidelines that have been published by any organization. Um, I think it's going to be basically everything that we have discussed so far, making sure that your facility is clean in terms of, you know, uh, bowler areas. You have to kind of focus on public areas and your employee areas. You want to make sure your break rooms, all of the equipment that the, that the employees are touching, everything they come in contact with is clean, as well as what your customers come in contact to. Think about the, you know, ATM machines, um, any kiosks in your building, um, obviously, you know, bowling shoes and bowling balls, we've already co covered that, and any um, seating area on your concourse, but um, at the same time, your credit card pin pads, anything basically that a customer may touch in the building, uh, you want to make sure that it's clean. You can handle this a couple of different ways. You can have schedule cleaning intervals throughout the day, say I do this every two hours or whatever the time frame may be for, um, for your center, or you can say I do this after every customer, okay? And then again, how you go about it is going to be different. Do you want your customers to see you doing that or do you think maybe that's not so important in your scenario? So those are the things that while we don't have, you know, concrete, procedures and guidelines to tell you and say do A, B, C, and D. These are all the things that you want to consider as you're defining uh, these guidelines for your own center. And I hope that, you know, gives you some, some guidance and some ideas on what to do. But again, if you need any further help, please feel free um, to let us know and we'll do whatever we can to help you. Tim actually mentioned that restaurant.org was a great spot for resource with links for each state. So oh, okay. restaurant.org, apparently they have a breakout uh, of the resources uh, for each state there. So it might be a good place to go look. Okay, very good. Thank you for sharing that. And um, Sue had a couple of questions. What are your suggestions on accommodating le leaks that stop play due to closure and want to come back and finish their season concerning social distancing. What do you think about that, Brian? I think, again, it's going to depend on your area, um, <clears throat> how they're allowed to return or not return uh, in the time frame that's uh, left. Um, I know mine uh, ended with like five weeks left and we've had to cancel uh, basically the last five weeks of the season for all those leagues. We're now into the to the first week of May before they even consider to start opening some non-essential businesses. And it's just getting too far out for those leagues really to be able to finish up or even want to finish up at this point. Not to mention that we don't know when we can basically have a full house of league back in in normal conditions. So I guess it's going to depend on your area as to what you feel comfortable with. But most of them have got into the situation where I think a lot of the centers have basically ended the leagues when the center closed, and now they're working out prize funds and stuff based upon what wins and losses were at that point. I know that's what my center has done, but we didn't give money out. We actually have it at the facility so that the customers have to actually come in when it's convenient after things open uh, and pick it up, one, so they can remember that we're there, and two, we make sure that the money gets to the right people like it's supposed to. That makes sense. But let me ask you this. What if a league has, you know, two, maybe three weeks left to bowl? Once the center reopens, 
why couldn't they come in one team at a time and maybe even pick you know low peak times of the day whatever that means today maybe earlier in the day or um, in the evening or whatever the case is and they can come in they can even schedule it ahead of time come in bowl their you know uh, remainder of the season whether they do it in one day or they come in three different times to make up for three weeks the center can process those scores or even the league secretary can if that's how the league is managed and technically they can finish the season bowling. They're just not bowling in the traditional sense, everybody at the same time. Yeah, I would think that if you could talk your league into that and the league was smaller, then there's no reason why you couldn't. I know with our leagues, we suggested some of this and most of our leagues told us where to go. So, <laughs> <laughs> But yes, I mean, this is going to be, you know, um, obviously up to them but if they wish to finish the season you know maybe some do yeah okay um kim also said uh restaurant.org is a great resource with links for each state thank yep. you kim um uh, a couple of questions left from sue family entertainment center what are your thoughts on social distancing for arcade and laser tag these are going to be i think maybe even in a way a little bit more challenging than um, specific bowling. So for you FEC folks out there um, in audience, if you have any suggestions for um, to share any thoughts to share on social distancing for arcade and laser tag, please um, leave a uh, type us a message. And I can tell you so a couple of things that I've heard is some operators are considering only turning on 30 to 50% of their um, arcade games yeah because that's um, going to be a big one too is everyone around the game so yeah the, the thing about it is you touch one 10 15 I games i mean it's got to be all wiped down again yeah folks are considering you know having disposable gloves next to the machines um wipes things of that nature for uh, customers to be able to wipe their area before they use it again those are going to be some individual considerations and uh, what you're able to do at this time and what you feel most comfortable with. Yep. And for laser tag, um, I've heard one of our colleagues or a couple of our colleagues have mentioned this, that um, some folks are considering really just taking the, obviously saying no more than however many people they allowed and, you know, in each phase and basically, um, cutting their capacity to lower numbers and making sure that the vests and the equipment is disinfected and sanitized between each use, which, you know, of course would only make sense, you know, but you also have to consider what happens inside of that arena with people being in such close, close proximity. Correct. Um, okay. Would you consider uh, one-way access into center with the greeter who hands out standards for a safe and fun experience to the guest and helps with the sanitation of the doors? Yes. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. If it were me, I would definitely consider that. Again. To the doors. So. Yeah. Um, great customer service. Um, it lets you, gives you an opportunity to speak with the customer for a couple minutes and let them know what you're doing and maybe what you're offering. Um, handing them something you want to keep you want to um be mindful of people being kind of hesitant to touch anything that you give them um but again if this works for you i i think that's a great idea and also that count of how many people come in and out especially in the beginning phases when it's very important to have um certain or less than certain amount of people and what is your recommendation on lane servers? Brian, what do you think? Uh, that's going to depend. One thing to keep in mind, if you are using Conquer and you have Best X uh, and you're, you can use the, if you want to run a limited menu during the time, you could actually create your on lane menu down at the console that the customer could actually order from the super touch. So mm -hmm. you do have some different ways that you could, uh, order some different food and beverages from the actual super touch. So one, you're going to cut down on the area in the back where you would have people standing. 
and two, you're going to eliminate a lot of that close contact. Maybe you just have the food delivered with, uh, you know, PPE stuff on, and they set it on uh, a table in one area where those folks are. Again, it's really going to depend on your facility and what you're comfortable with. Yes, and Mark just added in the comments, lane servers would keep the line down at the snack bar. Correct. Absolutely. Yep. Um, yes, that's a, Brian, that's a good point for the online orders. That's a great way to use that. And also keep in mind, how are you going to handle your food and beverage operation? Some folks are considering not even offering food on the lanes, while some people are saying, no, we're just going to, instead of using regular uh, plates and, and silverware, we're going to deliver everything in to-go boxes and with um, utensils, plastic to-go utensils already okay. wrapped. Yep. So the staff is not touching anything that the customer may touch and you know eat with. So again, there are a few different ways you can handle this based on your operation and what you're able to, um, to do at this point in time. Correct. Um, Sue, thanks so much for uh, submitting your questions as well. And if you have any follow-up questions or need any additional information, please don't hesitate to let us know. I wanna read this. Nick said, here in Arizona, you have to ask three questions. One of the questions, if they have had an elevated temperature in the last three days, you're not allowed to take anyone's temp if you're not in the healthcare profession, i.e. senior living hospitals, pharmacies, just an FYI. There you go. So even in this situation, you're not allowed to take somebody's temperature and, you know, go that route. So that's actually quite, quite interesting. Thank you for sharing that, Nick. And Mark said, we did a drive-through or drive-up payout for their leagues, I'm guessing. It worked out great. That's a great idea. Brian, how are you going to handle paying out your leagues? That's, we have it already all in envelopes. And when we actually open that folks can be out traveling, we're going to let them stop by to pick it up. But again, the drive-by is actually a great idea as well. Okay. But we actually aren't, act, we're not allowed to be out on the road at this point. So we're not, we haven't given out any and we haven't encouraged anybody to come out for the little bit of prize money they get. Uh -huh. We'll be handing it out once uh, we're back to being able to travel into non-essential businesses. Gotcha. Okay, makes sense. And Tony also said, change HVAC filters more often to keep air fresher. Yes. Yes. Uh, what is the cleaner for the super touch screens? Uh, Rick, I'm going to cover that in a minute. I'm going to show you the resource that you can um, that you can look into um, for SuperTouch as well as all of our other equipment, how to clean it, and what chemicals to use. So hold that thought for just a quick second. Um, Scott said, what about splitting staff into teams so if someone does become infected, whole staff does not? not a bad idea. I mean, yeah, you definitely don't want to, don't want to risk um, all of your staff getting infected and certainly, you know, um, possibly infecting everybody else. So yes, that probably would be, would not be a bad idea to, to kind of keep two, two groups that don't interact with one another. Brian, anything else to add to that? No, I think that's pretty good. Okay. Um, I mean, again, we're going to give them some great ideas in regards to, you know, cleaning and such, but the key thing is just to make sure that the customer knows they're clean. The one thing that I would say to anyone is if you do have best X, make sure that you're using the cleaning mode so that the front desk, uh, when the lane is shut down, will go into cleaning mode and until it's actually cleaned and they tell you back at the front desk, you won't reissue the lane. So it's a great way to make sure that you're not missing anything. Thank you for that reminder, Brian. Good point. All right. So at this point in time, I do believe we have answered all of the questions and read all of the comments that have come in. Um, let me quickly recap what we have covered today. Um, Mike talked about systems and technical. Mike, my apologies for just you know um, carrying on the conversation and um, not including you going forward. But uh, 
I do know we remember uh, the beginning of this webinar and the technical things that we that you have covered with us in terms of properly restarting the pin spotters, making sure there are no foreign objects anywhere in the in the area, turning on the breakers one at a time, uh, running continuous cycle for a couple of hours uh, prior to um, opening up the centers. Uh, things of that nature. Anything else that you might have thought of uh, listening to the rest of our dialogue that you might, may want to add to that? I think we covered it pretty well in the beginning there with all those pieces. The only thing I can add is we are open in tech support. We do have people answering the phones. So if there's anything in those processes that you need help with or you run into problems when you start turning things on, please let us know. We're there for you. We're there to help you. Just give us a call. Perfect. Thank you for pointing that out. Awesome. All right. And then we talked about some operational considerations. Um, your HVAC, checking the filters, replacing them if needed, hoods and vents, appliances, um, things that you might have um, put on hold or stop paying for completely for the duration of your center being closed, um, things of that nature, and then also operational considerations in terms of your hours of operation, um, any changes that you may have to implement going forward to accommodate to some of these changes that are happening um, across the board. And then finally, we've talked about training your staff. Um, not just training, but also communication with them, um, making sure they're aware of all of the changes and the initiatives going forward, um, cleaning procedures, making sure they're comfortable ut utilizing all of the systems that you have, your scoring, your POS, anything else that you may be dealing with. Um, so all things to consider going forward, some of those pieces, well, all of those pieces are going to be quite important as you're preparing to open up. Um, Thank you again for submitting all of your questions and, and comments um, during this webinar. I know we're running a little bit longer, but um, I really didn't want to stop the conversation as um, you guys have asked excellent questions and many of you have pro provided great ideas that all of us can learn from. So thank you again for that. Absolutely. I want, yes. Anything else, Brian, to add? I'm sorry. No, I think uh, the, the webinar went very good. The questions were great, and I hope we were able to provide some great information to the customers. Perfect. Thank you. And next, I want to cover um, some of the resources that you have available to you. Um, and Rick, this is where I'm going to talk about the document that's going to be um, answering your question, particular to cleaning of the SuperTouch. On Cubic AMF, our corporate website, um, we have a resources for COVID-19 page designated um, specifically to a lot of these things that we're talking about right now. Beyond the frame area is going to have all of our um, recordings to our previous webinars that we have hosted, as well as upcoming schedule for um, next couple of weeks for the topics that are coming up that we're going to be discussing next Wednesday. We're going to talk with a few proprietors from Bowling and Family Entertainment Center um, areas, and they're going to share some of their ideas and, and uh, feedback on a lot of these things that are happening right now. And I'm sure they will share some ideas um, that they're going to implement as well. And then all of our blog posts that we have made um, in the last few few weeks and couple of months, again, those can be find on, found on our Best Extras blog. Um, it used to be exclusive for Best X customers, but uh, recently we have opened it up to, to any of our customers. So if you haven't done so lately, um, go ahead and check that out. And then um, another important thing that I want to bring up here is from our COVID-19 resources page, Maintain your center. Uh, quite a few documents pertaining to um, turning on and off of your system, safety and care of Cubic AMF products. Rick, this is where you're going to um, find those resources on not only what chemicals are okay to use in some of 
that equipment, but also what's the proper way to clean. And then reopening checklists, we have created this um, kind of as a leave behind uh, for today. It pertains to today's topics. Some general notes for the center in terms of uh, temperature and humidity, um, computer and technical considerations, what Mike talked about today, how to properly uh, start them up, um, updates you may want to run prior to opening, things relevant to your lanes and pin spotters and all sorts of different things. And like Mike said, if you're having any issues or any challenges with any of that, our tech support is still working. They have been this entire time. And um, feel free to give them a call or send them an email, which I'm going to provide you with the email address here shortly. Uh, get in contact with them and they will be able to, um, to assist you in whatever issues you're having. And then furthermore, a few more industry resources that we made available on our website, just kind of as a shortcut for you, as a one convenient place for you to access anything you may need going forward. So again, a lot of these things are going to specific to be specific to your states, your counties, your cities. Um, so please be sure to keep up with um, those guidelines and regulations to make sure that you are not in violation of anything going forward. Now that we're finally getting to the point where we're able to reopen and hopefully very soon resume to our business as usual. And do not forget to follow us on Facebook, our Cubic MF Worldwide Facebook page, as well as um, our Beyond the Frame Facebook group. Um, they have been sharing content that we have created for our customers and also highlighting um, some of the success stories, best practices, different um, things that have been going on, all in efforts to help all of you kind of um, get ideas and advice and suggestions and recommendations on how to handle some of these, um, some of these challenges that we're facing, I mean, daily at this point in time. Uh, Mark, also the BPAA is also working on resources for centers and hope to have that available next week. Fantastic. I assume, Mark, this is going to be available on the BPAA site? Um, I would assume so, yeah, probably. I believe so, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I promise to give you direct um, access to, yes, on their website, the BPAA website. If you need to reach us for any training or operational questions, uh, please email matchtrainingadmin at cubicamf.com, scoring tech support at cubicamf.us for any technical questions or challenges, and info at cubicamf.com for any general uh, questions that you have uh, regarding any anything that we can help you with. Um, I was just going to say something else, but that thought has escaped me. Uh, Walter, here in Ohio, the BCAO is working on things. There's a webinar tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, Walter, is this webinar open to public to anybody to join? And if so, could you maybe provide the link um, down here to register or sign up for the webinar if you're able to? Um, this is what I was going to say say don't forget um the recording of this webinar will be on our uh, website on our resources for covid19 page in beyond the frame i know we have had unfortunately with um at this point we're only able to admit 100 people to uh to this webinar so i know there have been a few people that uh, weren't able to join us today so um please be sure to check our corporate website um, to listen to the recording or watch the recording um, for this webinar and any of the previous webinars that um, you haven't been able to attend. Um, again, for those of you that haven't been able to join us today, um, you will find the recording on this page probably a couple hours after um, after this webinar is over. So don't forget to check that out. And we have a couple of more messages. Okay, so Walter has given us a contact person. Um, 
that we can sign up with for the webinar tonight at 6, 6 p.m. And thanks for all the information, super informative. Oh, you're very welcome, Mark. Thank it you, was Mark. our pleasure, absolutely. Um, I, if you cannot see this message, I think it went out to everybody from Walter. Um, jclark at bolohio.com is going to, um, going to be the email address for you to be able to sign, to sign up for this webinar tonight. I trust they will provide very useful and important information to, for, for all of us. And again, I can't thank you enough for, for joining us today and for contributing, for asking questions, excellent questions, for sharing your ideas and suggestions and plans for reopening. Um, I'm sure a lot of folks will have, um, we'll be thankful for it and we'll be able to benefit from all of your ideas. Um, Mike and Brian, as always, thank you so much for sharing your ideas and, and expertise and advice on how to handle a lot of these things. You've been invaluable throughout this entire process as we're navigating through this uh, mess of COVID-19 and it finally feels like that there is some light at the end of the tunnel. So. Um, I hope we can power through together and, uh, and be able to overcome some of these challenges that lie ahead of us and come on the other side stronger and better. I think that's everybody's hope. Brian, Mike, anything to add? If any of this helps our customers, then it's been well worth us doing it. So to me, it's been a pleasure and uh, hopefully everyone gets something out of it that is useful that you can uh, use at your facility. Absolutely, that is the hope, isn't it? Yeah, we're here to help and support you guys. Anything we can do to help or support you guys, please let us know. We are more than glad to be able to help in this time of need for everybody. We know everybody's out there struggling. Everybody's trying to open back up. We'll do whatever we can to help you guys do so. so Absolutely. Just reach Absolutely. out to us. You've got our email addresses right there on the screen as Tasha just clicked off. <laughs> I will go right back for any of you that haven't had a chance to um, to capture it. Yes. The only one that I would mention is the scoring tech support is a cubicamf.us and not .com. So please keep that in mind if you do email us. Other than that, thank you very much for attending and we hope to talk to you in the future. Yes, absolutely. We hope you will join us for um, for one of the upcoming webinars. We thank you again so much for joining us today and sharing um, all of your ideas and suggestions and, and feedback. It is very much appreciated. Above everything all, we hope that you will stay healthy and well. Uh, we wish you all the best in the, in the upcoming weeks and of course, you know, in long term. And we're always here if and when you need us, we'll be happy to help you. And again, we hope to see you in the upcoming weeks and um, have a great rest of the day. Have a great day, everyone.